Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Test, Learn, Grow. Today, our guest is Barrett Betts. He is the Vice President of Marketing for Betco. So, Barrett, appreciate you joining Alan and I on the podcast. Hi, nice to uh, come on the podcast and, uh, and join you guys. I've I've listened to a few and, and been to a couple of live webinars, and uh, so it's, I'm flattered you guys asked me to join and uh, excited to chat. So Miles and I know you quite well. We, we work with Betco, but for those um, audience members listening who maybe have, are not as familiar, can you describe in detail what Betco is and does? Sure. So Betco is a, a cleaning products manufacturer. We manufacture um, industrial cleaning products and equipment, powered equipment. And um, we're a third generation family business. We were founded in 1950 by my grandparents, Carl and Ann Betts. And uh, my father's been involved since the early 70s. He graduated from college in 74. And uh, I think a funny story there that I like to tell is uh, he graduated college and he went to my grandfather and my grandfather, you know, he, he said, I'm going to I'm going to spend some time this summer just kind of messing around with my buddies and, and all that kind of stuff. And my grandfather said, let me make this clear. If you're not here on Monday, I'm selling the business. And so uh, my father showed up on Monday and uh, he's been heavily involved and, and really um, instrumental to growing the business to where it is today. Uh, we're doing over $100 million in revenue annually. Um, we were just a small regional uh, manufacturer back in uh, the 50s and 60s and and uh, going through actually the 70s and 80s too. And so my father uh, had a big part in growing the company to be, um, you know, uh, one of the top uh, manufacturers of cleaning products in the Jansen industry and, um, you know, gave us a reach across uh, all of the 50 states in the United States, as well as into uh, Canada and Mexico and uh, some other various international locations like India, Philippines, Japan, um, Chile. Uh, so pretty exciting to see kind of what my father has built over the years. And um, my, my brother, uh, Bradley, and myself uh, have been involved in, in the business for some time now. And uh, my dad's trying to retire. Uh, he's got to make sure he trusts us first. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, there are more days where he's playing pickleball uh, rather than calling into some of our staff meetings. But uh, um, so we've been around for 72 years now. And, um, you know, we're an industry leader in, in cleaning products and programs that help facilities reach their cleaning and maintenance goals. It's awesome. I love that story. You know, here on Monday, I'm selling the company. This is the kind of family dynamics uh, you only get in a family owned business. Yeah, sure. I'm lucky, too. It's really just it's myself, my father, my brother and my cousin, Mikey, is a, is a corporate account manager for us now. And, and the sales team. And so, you know, it's really just myself and three other family members. My dad uh, has is one of five siblings. And so it was him, both his parents, each of his siblings, uh, as well as a handful of his in-laws. And so he's, he's had a lot of exposure to the family dynamics and business. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. and so it's cool to be talking to you about digital marketing because most 70 plus year old companies, third generation family companies, it's easy for them to get stuck in. This is the way we've done it. This is what worked for my dad and my grandfather. So this is the way I'm going to do it. Right. And that is wholeheartedly not that co. Right. We're, when we're in meetings together, we're constantly talking about what else can be test, what's new, um, mm -hmm. what haven't we tried yet? You know, how can we keep pushing it forward and innovating? So I'd love to hear your perspective of that, right? Why do you think that is that way? and is focused on pushing forward versus, you know, sticking with what's worked in the past. Sure. Uh, I think that we've always been a, you know, a company that's tried to stay on the cutting edge of the industry, uh, no matter what that might be. Um, we want to be seen in the industry as an innovator, whether it's, um, you know, our manufacturing and shipping uh, procedures, or it's our um, tools and resources that we bring to the market or it's the product innovations that we formulate and, and bring to the market as well. So I think we, we try to stay on that innovative cutting edge in all facets. And uh, I think marketing is no different. So I can go back again. My, my mother was involved in the business as well. And she, her claim to fame is that she actually started the marketing department at Betco back in the seventies. So we were the, you know, one of the first in the Janssen industry to come out with, you know, sell sheets that promoted our products and, you know, taglines and all that kinds of stuff to help, 
uh, promote our, our floor finish products and those kinds of things. And um, I think that she, she was met with some resistance, but I think that my father saw the benefit in actually promoting our products to help sell them. And with regard to marketing, um, you know, we've, we've always had a viewpoint of uh, being best in class uh, from the standpoint of positioning the Betco brand. And, uh, you know, a lot of that was print for a long time. You know, we've got a full service print shop here at Betco and we still print a, a healthy amount of literature, uh, you know, sales wants it, requests it, uh, the market wants it and requests it. But, uh, you know, within the last 10 years, for sure, we've seen a greater shift to digital marketing and uh, just in that spirit, that kind of entrepreneurial spirit and staying on the cutting edge and leading edge, you know, how can we continue to innovate um, and push the envelope and reach our customers where they are? Um, and to do that, you know, we felt that leading in digital marketing and we call it digital marketing excellence, um, being those leaders was really important for us. So you touched on it, started by your mother back in the seventies, continue today. You guys have your own marketing department, mm -hmm. but you also work with us at level as a marketing agency. And for some folks, that's like a does not compute moment, right? So a lot of people we talk to feel like you have one or the other, right. There's a lot built up about like perceived tension between internal marketing departments feeling like an agency is trying to take their job and vice versa. An agency feeling like marketing department is going to be fighting them every step of the way. That's not been the case in the way we've worked together or how at level works with other members of our client teams, but mm -hmm. I'd like to get your perspective on it, right? Like what's it like for you being a client and, and you're the VP of marketing and you sort of have two departments that work for you. You've got your internal department and the level agency department, right? How do you make it from your seat? all work together and what are the benefits that you see? Yeah. Uh, gosh, I think there's so many, uh, so many ways you could go here. I think the key is, is collaboration. And I think that, um, you know, from our side of things, we educated ourselves on some of the best, um, modern digital marketing strategies and tactics. And through doing that, um, we ended up discovering level and, um, you know, I was then faced with the choice of, okay, we've got, you know, uh, we've got a great amount of expertise here internally. You know, we're fabulous at producing digital content. Um, we're fabulous at producing things that position the brand. Um, you know, we need expertise on how to utilize modern platforms uh, such as Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, and, uh, you know, modern marketing channels such as paid advertisement. Um, to leverage our brand even further. And, you know, the choice I had was, do we take time and build this expertise out internally here at Betco, uh, or do we partner with experts who already have that expertise? And for me, it was, I kept picturing in my mind, a, a ramp and you've got a, you've got a ramp that's slow and gradual, or you've got a ramp that's, you know, steep and, and quick essentially. So, um, you know, in our opinion, after we did some discovery sessions with the level team, I think the choice was obvious that, um, you know, in order to really build our expertise, target the audiences we want to target um, and, and influence people in the way we want to influence them digitally, that partnering with level made total sense. And I'd imagine also the the stakes get high, right? When we're, when we're talking about significant dollars being spent on campaigns, whether they're created internally or, you know, by an external agency yep. that you could do a slow ramp up time, but it could be very costly um, yep. to, to learn those mistakes the hard way. Yeah. I mean, you're investing um, essentially in a, in a, in a full-time team member and uh, they may or may not have the level of expertise you're looking for. And uh, you know, because of that, you may be um, spending more money on advertisement than you would initially want to, um, you know, but I will say I definitely went to uh, this was it was, uh, you know, full disclosure, not in the budget in uh, in 2021. And I had to go to our CFO and say, listen, like this is this is a part of our marketing strategy going forward and, and essentially get his buy in. So uh, how did you? Yeah, that see, that's that's fascinating. How did you do that, Barrett? Because. I think you have a vision. Um, you're back to you know cutting edge, Betco, trying to be where the puck is going to be rather than where the puck is now. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think it would have been easy for a lot of people to say, hey, we're really successful. We have a strong marketing department. Barrett, what, what the heck do you need more money for for these digital marketing guys? Like, you don't even know it's going to work. Right. What was your comeback to that? How did you, you know, you took a gamble, right? With your. Yeah. My sales pitch. Yeah. Give us, give us your sales pitch. Oh, uh, gosh. I'm trying to remember. Well, I was sitting <laughs> with, uh, I was sitting with our CFO and our controller. And, um, you know, I, I think I pretty much told them, uh, you know, I can, I can ramp this up slowly internally. Um, or we can ramp it up quickly externally and, and partner ourselves with um, a digital agency that really understands how to make these platforms and channels work for you. And um, I, I think that they saw kind of the passion and, and um, you know, the vision that I had and they were able to identify with it. Now, being a CFO, you're, you're supposed to scrutinize these types of things. And so there was some, uh, some scrutiny, but, you know, it was all just based on making sure that it's the best decision for Betco financially. So, um, you know, we were able to get everything ironed out and, and bring on level agency uh, in actually about a year ago. So June of yeah. June of 2021. So um, able to do that and then consequently uh, able to work, you know, those budget dollars into the marketing budget for Betco this year and going forward as well. Yeah, and in that year, I think what's really become clear, we found like a good division of of labor in a way, right? Where you do have a lot of things you do in house that we don't do, right? Those print pieces and things that, you know, you guys are doing for sales support that we're not involved in, but you had the talent to get those things done. And we, we could leverage that talent to help us get digital assets in place. So when it comes to graphic design and some of that creative strategy, you already have elements we were, we're able to repurpose or as you're creating them, we can ask you to say, while you're doing that, can you do this for us as well? Mm -hmm. And your team passes that to us. And then we do our side of things. And so if when we're on calls, it feels like we're one big team. Hopefully it feels that way to you as well, but it feels that way to us. And it's just sort of like, okay, I'll take this. You take that. We mm -hmm. break, we go do our parts and come back together, put it together and then move, move forward as the team. And it's, we've found a nice rhythm that way, which has it's been fun to develop yeah. and we'll to continue to develop. It'll continue to be fun. Yeah, I agree. I'm curious when, you know, I could imagine sitting in some of your staff shoes and hearing all of a sudden, like, hey, we're going to bring in an external marketing agency, you know, and like you start sweating a little bit, you get hot, you're like, oh, do I need to go back to the job boards? How did you assuage that fear that I'm sure was just instinctive, right? Natural human fear of like, oh, are they coming for my job? Yeah. Um, because your team works incredibly, you know, like Taylor, Jeff, like they yeah. are, we, you know, they're, I would count them friends. They're wonderful members. Mm -hmm. And but I'm sure it wasn't as easy at first. How did you um, address that? So everybody sort of understood already um, how to be innovative and what we needed to do to be more innovative in digital marketing and demand generation. And we actually did try initially um, to begin building it out ourselves. And we launched a few campaigns internally um, that had reasonable success. I think it was success because we were kind of starting from zero there. Um, but as soon as we discovered, uh, you know, how much quicker our ramp up time um, and how much more expertise um, the level team had, that it was a no brainer to, to go with you guys. So I think, I don't think there was much fear on this side of things. I think it was really a matter of everyone was on the same page. Um, we made the call to partner with level and it was like, all right, let's do it. So some people are listening to this and they're giving you a little side eye right now, right? But you can't see them in their car bear, but they're doing it. They're like, is it really that easy? Come yeah. on. Like what else? What am I missing here? So I'm curious, you know, you're the, you're the VP, you're the decision maker. You had to get buy-in from the team and you got that, which is great. Mm -hmm. But what, what was unexpected from your seats, right? Any bumps as you were trying to integrate an internal team and an external team? as you reflect on it that you could share with listeners and they can learn from. So as they try to do sure. it, it's a little bit smoother. Sure. So I would say the biggest thing is always just that, like getting to know you and ramp up phase. So uh, I think that we went through that a little bit over the first couple months while we were trying to sort of show the level team how we had previously run campaigns and you guys were showing us what your methodology is in running campaigns. And I think that's really just more about, the two teams uh, going through that getting to know you phase of integration. And I think that 
we did really well to get through that phase and hit our stride very quickly. But I will say that, you know, if there's, if there's a, a you know, a future client out there, um, you know, I would expect that even though um, you're going to have that getting to know you phase that, you know, within that six first six months, you're going to start really seeing progress being made and you're going to feel that, um, you know, if you on, on the client side are committing to the agency side that you're going to start seeing that collaboration really take off. But I think you get out of it, what you put into it. And what I would say is that, um, you know, the Betco team is fully bought in as to kind of what the strategy is here. And I think the level team really has done a fantastic job of getting to know Betco and knowing what we care about. And uh, that has enabled us to really, I think, come through with some solid ideas, um, solid campaigns. There's always new, new things going. So I, I think that, you know, the biggest challenge in my mind, again, would be that getting to know you period where you're just integrating each other's methodologies. But, um, you know, if you're committed to working together, then like I said, you get out of it, what you put into it. Yeah, totally. And I think you mentioned everybody bought into the strategy. I think one thing that we did that's been super helpful this year, we created that strategy together, right? When we sat down to do annual planning, we got through the initial get to know each other phase. Like, all right, now that we, we figured it out, we know what we got to do. Let's talk about how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And we got on the same page, you know, 12 months ago. And so now in 2022, we've had the plan that we can then execute against and work from the vision's clear for everybody. Everybody knows their role and mm -hmm. removing any of that confusion, I think has been instrumental in making sure that the, the two teams function as one team instead of feeling like they're rowing in opposite directions. Yep. I think the clear thing too is, uh, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, Miles, but knowing who's doing what, right? So we've got capabilities on our end, Level's got capabilities on, on your end, and just knowing, okay, I think it did start with mapping out kind of our strategy for 2022. And so we know what's coming um, and uh, we know what sort of content we want to produce. We know what sort of messaging we have uh, or want to launch. And just making sure that you have a clear path of who's doing what in regards to content creation, um, always communicating, uh, those sorts of things are really important. And I think that we execute on those very well as a, as a partnership. Adam, it looked like you were going to say something before and I kept talking. So I'm pausing and we can edit this out. Uh, right? I'm just ruminating on like, it doesn't matter how much money your company, you know, has to spend or the weight of the agency behind it. If you don't have a solid partnership where two sides genuinely see each other, understand the business goals and respect each other, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, it doesn't work. And, you know, you, we've seen that in different situations, miles, and it's just without partnership, it all falls apart. So, right. How, I'm going to ask, I'm going to turn the tables here, miles. Let me, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. How do, how do you develop? I think you're, you're an expert at crafting relationships. How did you craft partnership with Betco with Barrett? Well, I appreciate that compliment. I don't know if I would self-identify as an expert. Uh, I feel like there's always room to improve, to get to that expert level. But I think, it, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we did a podcast recently about soft skills, Alan, right? And it's this idea that, you know, technical knowledge or technical skills is important, but at the end of the day, we're doing business with people. And so getting to know Barrett as a human, not just the VP of marketing at Betco, me sharing personal details with him, him sharing personal details with me, helps to form the relationship that the partnerships built off of. So taking time to not just be all about business, I think is really important, especially in the beginning, because we have to like to work to, with each other and like each other to want to move that forward. Otherwise, I don't think the partnership grows. It becomes more that like Bear would be like, here's my vendor. And I'm going to say, I need you to do this. And then he's going to hang up the phone versus we've talked about where our family's vacation and what we're doing and things like that. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, like you mentioned friends earlier, Alan, like a, mm -hmm. a friendship and mutual respect grows that makes the business relationship even more productive. So to me, I, I think it's that. I don't think there's like a formula for it. It's just take genuine interest in the other person on the side of the, on the, the video call or phone call, get to know them and their business. Because if you only get to know the business and not them, then I don't think you'll go as far as you could. Right. And it, it almost sounds that when you first hear it, like 
an oxymoron. You're like, why, you know, we're here to market, we're here to sell things, we're here to help you reach your customer generation goals. You know, why do I care where, you know, that you like to ski or where you vacation? You're like, well, and there are agencies, right? And there are people, you know, that are like that and are like, let's go, let's go, let's go. We, you know, we've encountered that. Um, so at first it sounds like, Miles, what, you, what the heck you doing? Like, why are you, why are you slowing down? But to your point, great marketing solves problems, right? And if you don't truly understand the human on the other side of the, the screen, especially in, in a remote world, how can you help solve their problems? Because it comes out in organic ways, you know, what what Barrett needs assistance with, what what Betco needs moving forward, going forward, um, that you couldn't just simply get if we sat down for a one hour strategy meeting and then said, okay, See you later. Catch you. Catch you later. Yeah. <laughs> and what's What's funny about that is, you know, it's our relationship building has been like entirely remote, you know, um, and uh, I've even like made comments to Taylor and, and Jeff and been like, yeah, it'd be cool to, you know, meet, meet up in person. You know, we're not too far away. Um, yeah, we should. But, we really need to for sure. But I would say that, you know, um, I don't know. It's, it's just been sort of an organic growth in um strategic alignment has led to trust has led to you know building out a more personal relationship and i think that enables us to um ideate and strategize more freely on you know what we're launching now and going forward um, what i've been commenting on recently is that we we have a roadmap and a plan for what we're doing this year but i feel like every time we move into a you know a new phase of that plan there's always a new kind of nuance that we're trying um, within the, you know, as the plan or the phases progress forward. And so I think um, uh, that brings up another point is, you know, just being open to trying and testing. I mean, that's kind of the level mantra, right? Is, is test, learn, grow. So you have to be open to trying uh, different things with uh, campaigns you put in market uh, because that's what's going to give you the real insights on uh, what's resonating with your audiences. And uh, I really have enjoyed how the more we move forward, the more we introduce new nuances to what we put together. And it helps, I think, make the campaigns and ultimately the relationship stronger. All right, Barrett, you've made some tremendous points. And, you know, to Miles's earlier phrase, slow down in order to speed up. Um, when it comes to relationship building, we appreciate Betco and your business and your partnership, most importantly. So thanks for joining us today on the podcast and we look forward to having you back on soon. Thanks guys. Enjoyed it. Thanks for having me.